Hello, this is Clint McDonald. In this tutorial, we're going to look at a few things, um, but mainly, mainly around properties. So we're going to look at some form controls and some form objects, as well as the properties that go with them. I teach at a college, and one of the biggest questions that I get from my students in my first year courses are, I can't get this to work, or how do I do this, or how do I make something do this, or how do I make something look like this? And my answer to every time I have that question is, there's a property for that. And so that's the key phrase for this tutorial is, there's a property for that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start looking at some forms. So what I've done is I've already set up a brand new project within my solution here. And the only thing I've done to this project so far is I renamed the form and I set the startup form in the project properties to be the new name. Other than that, there's nothing I've done in here. So the code file is empty and the form is blank as you can see. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the form properties itself. So when I click on the form and I go to the properties window, if your properties window is not open, you can go here and you can open it up um, through the properties window here by hitting F4 or just choosing view properties window. And we're going to make this a little bigger because we're going to be in here quite a bit. So within the form itself, when I click on the form, you can see that my form main is here. So this properties window is context sensitive, meaning that it changes based on what your current object is. So within my form main here, I've got that as my current object. And there's a lot of properties in here that are available to you. And you can see a lot of these properties actually expand open and have more sub properties within them. So we're going to look at some of them here. Not all of them, but we're going to look at some of them here. Um, and knowing that there's other things that we want to do in there as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the form size. So we're going to pretend that we are making a form, an application for a tablet on a Windows tablet and it's going to run at an 800 by 600 resolution. So there you go. We've set it at 800 by 600 and you can see that I'm going to shrink up my properties window a little bit here to see it but there it is. So we've got an 800 by 600 form. That's great. And so you can see the form changes automatically. Now what we want to do is we might want to set the minimum size. All right, The minimum size, maximum size. Maximum size is something you don't usually want to set because people like to open windows up in their big screen TVs and their 32 inch monitors, etc. But minimum size is something that you sometimes want to set. And what that does is that if you have multiple objects on your form, when you shrink the form they won't overlap. And that's pretty important. So we'll set minimum size. And as you can see here, as I resize the form, it won't let me go any shorter than 600 by 400. So we'll design our form at the smallest size and make sure that it can stretch. So there's a few more things we want to do here. Some of the other properties. One property we want to look at is start position. We almost always want to set the start position. And I'm going to set this to center screen. Um, when you're developing on a multi-monitor system, and you run your application, it'll quite often open up on the other screen, which is somewhat times a pain. If you set the start position to center screen, then it's always going to open on your current monitor, which is usually your development environment when you're doing it. And that's fantastic. We can look at things like icon. So we can choose an icon and browse our hard drive. I'm going to choose a Death Star icon here. So open it up. And now we've got a little pretty icon in the top. Another good practice is always always set the text property. So you can see there's a text property. So we're going to just change the text property here. And you can see that in the top bar, in the navigation bar, it did change the text. There's all kinds of other things you can do in here, such as setting background color. So we can set the background color of the entire form here to be uh, Gainsborough. So it's a grayish type of color. Uh, we can set a background image for the form where we can import a resource file. So let's import a quick file here. Let's grab um, a Death Star picture here. Open that up and we'll choose that form. And you can see that I've got a background image in my form now. I can very quickly change how that form applies to the background by changing the layout. And if I do something like center or stretch, you can see it changes um, the way it works and the way the background of the form works. And that's pretty cool. So some really quick, easy things you can do. You can make really cool looking Windows applications. You might want to also change the form size. So for instance, um, if you don't want your form to be able to shrink or, or eliminate the minimum, maximum, and close buttons, you can do things like no border. And you can see now my form doesn't have a border. Or you can do uh, 3D 
border. So it looks like if you look here, it's a little sunken in there. That's pretty cool too. So different things that you can choose. <clears throat> so moving forward, there are lots of other things that you want to do. One of the things that you want to do here is causes validation is true. Uh, I'm going to say this many times throughout all the tutorials, but data validation is pretty much the most important thing you can do when you're creating a Windows Forms application. And that's because you want the user experience to go nicely. You want to make sure that you're not going to crash your program because the data was entered incorrectly. Uh, or also very importantly that if you're storing your data in a database, that your data is stored is consistent, normalized, and uh, effective and, and trustworthy. So those are the things that you're going to need to consider. So let's put a couple of controls on this form. And we're going to throw on a label. Throw a label in here. We'll throw a text box on here. Maybe we'll show a month calendar. Or is there a date picker here? Yeah, date time picker. We'll choose a date time picker here. And we should probably grab another label for that. So we'll grab a label on here. Throw it here. The first label, we're going to change the text property to name. All right, there we go. We've got their name there. And then the second label here, we'll change the text to date of birth, so DOB for date of birth. All right, so there we go. We have a couple of pieces of information we're going to gather. And then we're going to do a couple more things. We're going to throw a button on here that says, uh, check the data so we'll use check for the text property there and then we'll grab another button and we're going to throw this button down the bottom right corner here and we're going to choose that as close okay so now for good style guide um, purposes and consistency every object should be named and our objects are going to be named or our controls are going to be named using hungarian notation so some people use but i use btn um, so we're going to name our object, so button close. We're going to name our check button to button check. Our date of birth, date time picker here. Oop, double clicking that, don't want to do that. So our, data, our date time picker here, we want to rename that. And date time picker is sort of weird. We're just going to use DTP for date time picker. And we're going to say date of birth. Okay. And then our text box will change us to txt uh, name, like that, all right? And that way all of our objects have proper Hungarian notation um, names. So now moving forward, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to do a th few things with these things. So for instance, a name box, we want that to start out blank, and we want it to start off with certain things. Now you can see our name boxes here sort of have this gray box around them and it doesn't look very good so what we're going to do is we're going to take these and we're going to play with our properties so with our properties we're going to change two things one we're going to set the background color not to be Gainsborough but we can set it to be transparent and that way it can blend in now you can see the black text on there doesn't work very nicely so we want to change the four color and we can just type in white there or we can use um, our hashtag code, so we go hashtag FFFFFF, which is our hexadecimal codes for what we're going to do. And you can see FFFFFF is white, so we changed it back to us anyways. And we're going to do the same thing for the other label. We'll change it to a transparent background and a white four color. Not coral, we want white. So we'll do white. There we go. And now our form looks a little bit better. And maybe we don't want these gray buttons. I mean, we could use gray buttons if we wanted to, but we don't really want to use gray buttons. So we're going to choose the background color for gray, and let's find a custom color. Does this really match? That sort of matches the form. Maybe it's a little little um, green for us. So we can choose different colors in here. Let's go down to the web colors into the green spectrum here, and let's use let's dark green, sea green. Okay, sea green looks a little bit better for what we're doing. And then what we're going to do is we're going to choose the four color again. And again, we're going to choose white here. Okay. We're going to make the button a little bit bigger. And as you can see, now the button looks um, a little bit more consistent. And if we want to have our buttons being consistent here, it's a good idea to do the same thing with both buttons. So if I line these up here, you can see I can 
very quickly get them to be the same size, change the background color. And I think that was sea green, right? So sea green and four color of white. And now our buttons are a consistent um, color. So essentially with all of these things, there are properties that can, that can do something. And what we want to do is we want to look at a couple more properties and then we're done with this tutorial. One of the things that you want to do with buttons is you want to have a consistent location. So with something like close, we can do something with anchors. So we can take our anchor and change that from top left to bottom right. And what that means is that close button will always be in the bottom right corner no matter what screen resolution we're using. And I'll show you what that means. So if I minimize my properties window here, you can see as I drag this window around, my close button actually stays in the bottom right corner. Okay, So that's pretty uh, important to keep consistency um, across an application. So the long and the short is everything that you want to do with the look, the feel, and how things act typically starts with some kind of a property. So we can do things. So for instance, date of birth. It's very unlikely somebody who's using your system was born today. So we should probably set the default date being sometime in the past, so knowing your audience. So if your application is at school children in grades 9 through 12, then you might want to set the date of birth being approximately 14 years ago. So we can set the value for the date to be some starting date. Now I can set it here automatically and you can see that by setting this it changes it and that's okay. But 10 years from now this application is going to be 10 years out of date. So we'd want to do that in the programming. But for now you can see there's a property there. You can say okay the maximum date. Well the maximum date can't go past today. Okay, And the minimum date 1753 who's going to be that old for a date of birth so let's choose something like 1950 okay and that way when they're doing it the properties are set so that you can only do certain things and that's really important so everything that you want to do calendar formatting formatting right to left alignment things that the behavior of things that can happen data binding, the design of them, are they locked? You can lock things out if you want, and how they dock and how they work within the Windows atmosphere can all be done within the properties. So it's really important to know the properties and knowing that basically on the top of the window here, that's what your current context sensitive properties list is about. Thank you.